<laughs> hey, what's up guys? I'm here at an event that YouTube doesn't like, and I'm here with two of my friends, Bill Pedersen and Clark Apotion, and they are very, very dialed in with gun laws. They represent the Utah Shooting Sports Council. That's the gun lobby in the state of Utah. Utah, by the way, is the most permissive state ranked by a few groups for gun laws. All of these apply nationwide. They're, they're issues nationwide. And we're gonna kind of sprinkle in some information where it may be different in different states. I am an, I am an attorney, but I'm not your attorney. And I'm, I'm, I'm a recovering attorney. And so don't take any of this as legal advice. But let's jump to number one. Number one is brandishing. This is one where easily somebody who's a good, honest gun owner, you know, you're trying to, hey, you know, I'm packing, we're gonna untuck here and let them know, let's not start something, right? Because it's not gonna end well. You think you're de-escalating the situation, but you may have just committed a misdemeanor. And as soon as you draw, now yeah, that thing has quickly become a felony. You never fired a shot, you can wind up behind bars. So how does that work? What should people, yeah, people be aware of? Brandishing is the precursor. In Utah, it's a misdemeanor, and I think most states it's probably a misdemeanor. But that's, if you display the weapon with the intent to intimidate in a non-self-defense situation, in an angry or threatening manner, in the presence of two or more people, I mean, that's what the statute says, then that's brandishing. However, if you point that gun somewhere between their toes and the top of their head, turns into a felony, that's aggravated assault. So assault with a deadly weapon in some states, but it's aggravated assault. That's a felony, you go to prison. And so many people want to do it. You know, they want to de-escalate. And it's like, okay, I'll, I'll show my mean face or I'll show something, you know, my posture or something. And it's, and a lot of people think, well, I'll just, just lift up my side of my shirt and let them see my firearm. And it's like, oops, now, now we've, we've done something different. Yeah, and, and I probably want to point out, I mean, hey, sometimes brandishing is necessary. Sometimes pointing that gun at somebody is necessary. Yep. But it's in the act of self-defense, which is in most states an affirmative defense. You've got to admit to that act and then explain why, articulate why you needed to do that to survive. Yeah, it's a serious thing. Now, next two are things that can easily happen. You know, you go to the gun store, you buy an AR pistol. An AR pistol is just any AR with 16 inches or less uh, barrel, barrel length, right? And so people say, I bought an AR on the shelf right there there's a stock you see right on the on the shelf next to it, you say oh there's a stock cool you buy it as soon as you put that stock on your on a 16 inches or less um barrel we we just had a problem same thing with that pistol if you have a forward forward grip on there it's so simple because you can go buy them they're and everywhere oh, yeah. and people and don't realize I, I thought it was an ar i didn't even know the difference between and, pistol and, and i've got this forward grip and it's got a picatinny rail and my gun has a picatinny my rail and look it fits one. Yes. It, my pistol has one it fits right on there so come bam. <laughs> you know and it looks cool yeah it looks so cool <laughs> you you have a pretty uh, intense history with the with the ATF and and stocks they they do know my they do know my name yeah <laughs> I think yeah so with the with pistol grips that one's uh, we got to do a whole new video on that because that one's changed real recently this yes. week but bump stocks was another so bump stock uh, was a device that was used to uh, assist in speeding up the rate of the rate of fire and the way that that was done by the government. This was under Trump, by the way. Sorry. Yeah. I know people don't like hearing it, but this was Trump um, who did this. And they just, administrative agency just says, nope, can't do this anymore. And then we're going to take them with, without giving anything back to the people. That and all and I probably want to add that for, for twice now, during the Obama administration, they specifically and affirmatively said bump stocks are not machine guns. Oh, yeah. And then later on, they said, you know what? It, it is now. The bump stock itself is now a machine what gun. What changed? Uh, the plastic? The color? Yes. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> but it was pretty fun to walk into ATF when we had to turn in oh, your yeah. bump stock. Yeah, we, t we, we went into the Salt Lake office of the ATF. Yeah. They knew we were coming. My attorneys had yeah. arranged it and all that. And they gave me a little form to turn, you know, to, to fill out to turn this in. And Bill just happened to notice. That says for destruction of firearm or something like this. So I took a picture of it, sent it to my attorney real quick. He says, rip that form up. He says, That's the, they gave you the yeah. wrong form. Uh, I bet so, it was an accident. Too. Yeah, I'm sure it was an accident. <laughs> 20 bucks, he still doesn't have it. Right. <laughs> if you're the kind of person who carefully looks into the laws and the things you're doing, you're probably the kind of person who's careful in all aspects of life. And one of those where I try to be, you know, my best is in providing for my family. 
Retirement is always on my mind looking into the future. And so it's frustrating when you see things like the government just printing away 15% of our money over the last few years through inflation. I've been in learning with Lear Capital about investing in gold and silver. It's appreciated quite a bit over the last few years and it has a long track record of holding value and even appreciating. If you have an IRA or other investment vehicle already, you can use those things to invest in physical gold that you control. So the place to go when you're ready to investigate is learbackfire.com or you can call the number below. That's learbackfire.com. The next one is selling to a prohibited person. This one is serious because, you know, as much as we want guns to be out there and, and we support the Second Amendment, we don't want everyone to have guns. We don't want guns to get in, in the wrong people's hands. Of course not. And so uh, a prohibited person is somebody who can't legally just go to the gun store and purchase that, that fire. And so if you sell to somebody who is a prohibited person, you yourself are a felon. But the issue is knowingly. The issue yeah. is you have to knowingly sell. So what are some ways if somebody is a good, honest person, how do you pre- how do you prevent yourself from making a mistake well, and selling one, to you the could, wrong person? You, you know, I mean, hey, if you know, if, they, if they've made statements that an, an otherwise normal person would say, you're going to go rob a bank with this, aren't you? Uh-huh. You better not sell that gun. If you happen to know they're underage, if you happen to know, you know, ask for their driver's license to cover yourself. Concealed they, carry card. Yeah, right. it, that if, if they presu- present an out-of-state driver's license oh, yep. that's your first clue and that's what's going to hang you out to dry um, if, if you get caught because you just sold to somebody from another state you can't do that <laughs> well um, i think for most gun owners uh, most of them want to do their due diligence on these things to make sure and in utah we just passed uh, a background uh with bci where you can you do can private privately sale. Go. yeah you can privately check somebody's background if they agree to it and you don't have to go through the ATF and that kind yeah. of stuff to, to, to make sure, but it's not required in now, any way. That is fantastic. That should be everywhere nationwide, right? Like, we don't want the guns to go to the wrong people. You know, like, I think sometimes we as gun owners are presented that way, like, oh, they just don't care. We care more than anybody else. Yeah. Like, we want guns in the right hands, is what. And so being able to check, not being required, because, you know, then we're, we're restricting some things, but being able to is huge. I, yeah. what, why would that be controversial? Why isn't that instantly in every state? Yeah, you'd think, and hopefully other states will follow suit. You know, they'll take a look at Utah, and, and, and we, we lead by example in many states. You know, California should take a look at Utah every day. Oh, California. Oh, poor California. Poor California. <laughs> so when ammo is scarce, reloaders rejoice, right? Because you can just make ammunition anytime you want in your garage. As long as you got primer, brass, powder, and bullet, you're ready to go. And so one that people can easily make a mistake with is you have to have a license in order to manufacture and sell ammunition. And so it can certainly happen, especially when ammo is scarce. Your buddy says, hey, you know, I'll, I'll pay you 50 bucks and I have some 30 out six. I don't have anything to hunt with. You make the ammo, you sell it, and suddenly, uh-oh, we just created all kinds of problems for ourselves. Yeah. Hey, I forgot this one as we were recording, but this is a very important one to watch. But there are state laws to be aware of. And that is when you go to pick up your kids from school, you know, do you have a firearm in the car that you take? Well, now you're in a school zone. Uh, So, you know, often I'm out at the range, I'm out shooting and I've always got to think, you know, do I have firearms in the car? There are state laws that are important to be aware of here. You know, you may be able to be a concealed carry holder um, and take firearms into those, those zones. But it really is state specific, just lots and lots of things to be aware of. So check before you go. Okay, next one is a protective order. So this is one uh, a Rahimi case that's uh, not a good case. Gun owners hate this case um, that's before the Supreme Court um, that is all about the issue of a protective order. Now, the, the problem with the protective order is there's really not due process happening uh, to have a protective order against you. And if you have a protective order, you now can't carry. So t- tell us a little bit about that issue. Well, so, and- so the thing about a protective order is you haven't been, you haven't been um, suspected of committing a crime. They aren't telling you you've committed a crime. You certainly haven't been convicted of committing a crime. But if you get a protective order, 
and you have a gun, now you're a felon. Right. So, so a like girlfriend, that. you know, whatever, signs a piece of paper, says, oh, this guy's dangerous. I need a protective order against him. Goes to the courthouse, files that. You get a protective order against you. There was no beyond reasonable doubt. There was no due process. You could just have a, a, a protective order against you. Now your rights are restricted. Yeah. You can't carry. Yeah. yeah. And and the, you're right. Rahimni, uh, the, the case before the Supreme Court that was just argued this last week, um, yeah, they didn't actually even argue due process. That's the scary part, is the due process part of it. Right. And that's the part we, we, we emphasize the most. Um, because this one scares me the most because if you got... An, a vindictive spouse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, people you getting can divorces. Be yeah, you can be in a lot of trouble. You know what? When you're so. talking about a fundamental right, I mean, it's mm -hmm. the second one, the the, the Second Amendment. Um, to take someone's to ban them from having a firearm, ban that fundamental right when there was such so. a lack of appropriate due process, commensurate with the taking of a right. Uh, it's we've always hated that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Problem. Take the firearms first and then go to court. Uh, I like taking the guns early. To go to court would have taken a long time. So you could do exactly what you're saying, but take the guns first, go through due process second. Okay, next one is marijuana. Um, in a lot of states, marijuana is legal for medicinal purposes or recreational or whatever else. And so gun owners say, oh, you know, as long as I acquired marijuana legally, then I'm fine. Not so much. Yeah. So how does this one work? So, so if I have if I have marijuana in some states, perfectly fine. If I have a gun in some states, perfectly fine. If I have a gun and I have marijuana, I'm a federal perfectly felon. Perfectly not fine. Yeah. yeah. Perfectly not. Yeah. <laughs> and, and whether you know it or not, you've committed a felony. You are a prohibited person when you have the one and the other. And it doesn't matter. Medicinal marijuana, it doesn't matter. It is stall is marijuana. And yeah. so I think that was a a liberal trap that they set when they go around. Yeah, because they and, want the yeah, marijuana, but they, they don't want the guns. Marijuana, so they don't like, want the guns. Like this is brain. a great way of doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. And so, even though your state may not prosecute it, um, it, it the, the feds the can come in any time. <laughs> yeah, and they'll go through. I have heard, I should say, of them going through garbages and looking for disposable vape pens or something like this. And yeah, anyway, there's some horror stories along those lines. Next is SBR, so short barreled rifles. So this is a rifle with 16 in inches or, or shorter barrel length. And if you get a tax stamp, you can have it SBR'd so that it, you can have a, a stock on the back of, of your AR-15 or whatever uh, firearm that is. So now we have a 16 inches or shorter. We have the stock. You paid $200. You went through the process so you made it an SBR. You're fine, right? So that follows under the NFA. You're following the NFA. You did everything right. Got this. This um, got your tax stamp. But I live in St. George, Utah, right down in the corner of Utah. Very frequently, many days, I'm going to be in Utah, Arizona, and Nevada, all in one day. Sometimes I go shoot in Utah. Sometimes I go down the other road, and I end up in Arizona when I when I'm shooting. Well, if I take that SBR that I legally have, and I have my tax stamp and everything, but I'm in Utah and I just go shoot in, in Arizona that day, uh-oh, we had a big problem. It's crossing state lines with an, with an SBR. So you have to notify the ATF and say, I'm crossing state lines, I'm going here. Uh, and it's easy, it's a simple process, but uh, that's why I don't even own an SBR, is because I know someday I'm going to make the mistake. I'm yeah. going to, instead of going down River Road one way, I'm going to go down the other way and end up in Arizona and I'm going to break and, that law. And you are the guy they will make an example oh, they of would too. Love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, right? <laughs> because you were just telling me there's a lot of YouTubers yep. that are in prison right now. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah, multiple. They, um, and people that have run ins. And these are people that are like, like good guys who are not trying to violate laws some of them have just been stupid and reckless mm -hmm. and we all know hey you gotta follow everything perfect yeah, see, right and he has a real pretty face he does not want to go to prison <laughs> that's the thing that's the thing yeah <laughs> no one wants to see jim in prison uh, no and least <laughs> no. of all least of all me what would you say is the most common way that a gun owner ends up in jail um, you've seen lots probably of probably between brandishing mm -hmm. And uh, protective order protective violations. Protective order is a big one. Um, drunk, uh, uh, under the under the influence of alcohol or drugs, and in possession of a firearm. firearm. Yep. Doesn't mix. Um, and cause so those are specific crimes, especially in Utah, where they drop the BAC from 0.08 to 0.05. Yeah. 
essentially kind of if you easier smell to some do. Smell some cough syrup and yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. You're and done. so um, yeah. So you guys have led the like I, I was telling my wife. Oh, this is. I was mad at you guys last night. By the way, oh, well, I was talking to my them. wife and I said I was going to come here and talk with you guys. Those I said, communists. oh, they're from the Utah Shooting Sports Council, and I was telling them about all the great work you did. And she she said, well, that well, that's great. Why aren't you a member? And I said, oh, I I totally am. <laughs> of course I am. And and she said, you are. And I said, yes. And then I thought. Have I ever like? Turns out, to become a member, you have to actually become a member. Yes. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I I listen to you guys on Gun Radio Utah every week, and I'm like, of course I do. I'm I'm part of this. And I realized the I realized last night I was like, you know, I don't know if I've ever actually signed up. And so I'm officially now a member, and I was embarrassed yes, there that you I go. wasn't before. Welcome to welcome to welcome our newest to the member. Yeah, exactly. Our newest exactly. member. So two other states. What are some of the if you could work on a few key things to bring that Utah is doing to other states, especially states where you know, you have a Republican majority, people that, mm -hmm. that would support gun laws, but maybe they aren't as organized and just haven't worked on it yet. What are a few key pieces of legislation that you'd like to see brought Well, obviously we've got, what, 21, 22 permitless carry states right now. Right. I'd like to see the rest of them now. But if you look at, so that's, uh, we're almost to half of the states, definitely two thirds number wise. But if you uh, do all the land mass, we've got over three fourths of the land mass of the United States is permitless carry. The rest of them ought to be like that. That's incredible. Yeah. You shouldn't yeah. have to have a permit. If you can lawfully own that gun, for goodness sakes, you can law. Why, why do you own it? Well, the Second Amendment ain't about hunting, folks. Well, mm -hmm. my, my favorite one would be, um, and I would highly encourage other states, is to do um, concealed carry for school teachers. Yeah, you know, if that's we, if such we want to keep our violence oh, yeah. down, you know, they teach them first aid, they teach them how to use a fire extinguisher, they teach them all kinds of stranger things. Stranger danger. Stranger danger, everything. exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, if you if you care about your students that much, let your ki uh, let your teachers carry. We're Stop not saying prohibiting. everyone has to carry. Yeah, no. But let the ones that want to carry. And carry they, if they want to do it and they yeah. want to get trained, then they exactly. should be able to do it. To you know, exactly. the, the, the media comes down on us and says, "Oh, you're arming teachers." And no, we no. arm policemen. We arm the military. We don't arm teachers. But you know what? We don't do in Utah. We don't disarm teachers. That's right. That's exactly. Right. Yeah. In fact, that's so. how I met my wife. Was at a free but, teacher yeah, class right after hey, seeing that's you. awesome yeah. yeah so another thing i know you guys talked about on the radio last week i posted this uh, on twitter so there was an incident in maine um the, there was a shooter and of course he went to gun free zones yeah right outside the bowling alley there's a sign that you can't go in can't go in if you if you have firearms and that, that's one that i just i wish gun owners would work when you see those signs go talk to a local business owner and tell them what they're actually doing yeah it's an important point because you know what in maine it's not against the law to go into a bar or a place that serves alcohol with your gun but unless they post so they have to affirmatively post a sign if they don't have a sign there's no crime mm -hmm. uh, it's not against the law unless they post a sign the sign then has the weight of law but yeah you got to talk to these folks you got to talk because that's because exactly what he did went to a gun-free zone and that's why he was able to, in a, in a gun-loving state like Maine, receive no return fire. Right. Yeah. And the, the really shocking thing is that somebody would go up to that sign and he just walked right through it. Can you believe he didn't Mark want to follow the I don't know law. how that happened. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of Backfire. And thanks to you guys uh, for from the Utah Shooting Sports Council being on here. We'll see you in the next video.